want low recoil don't go with a 22 go with something a little different like 38 short colt or 32 smith and wesson long and a lot of people don't know about these cartridges even though they are very classic cartridges now the 32 smith and wesson long at, at a certain time in history it was about as popular as 38 special and it's relatively plentiful to uh find and shoot today and it's not terribly expensive and any firearm chamber in 327 federal magnum like my lcr in 327 federal magnum will fire that or 32 h and r magnum any revolver in that will fire that as well so it's backwards compatible the 38 short colt a lot of people don't really understand what it is it's essentially the uh the great grandparent cartridge of the 357 magnum so let me explain here 38 short colt right here after 38 short colt the 38 long colt came out i don't have one of those but it's pretty similar to the next cartridge our 38 special and then that turned into the 357 magnum so essentially because the case is about the same diameter and rim diameter everything's the same it's backwards compatible in a 357 magnum or 38 special revolver magtech even makes a version called the 38 special short and it's head stamped that but essentially all it is is a 38 short colt so 38 short colt will work just fine in the 38 or 357 magnum revolver so it should have a lot less recoil though because it's an older cartridge and that's why it's in a lead round nose we want to go for penetration here 125 grain rated at 730 feet per second our 32 smith and wesson long is only 98 grain rated at 705 feet per second so similar velocity rating so we're going to go through the chronograph see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time i'm also going to do some seven yards drills at my cardboard guy here to see what kind of practical uh, shootability and follow-up shots i can do with these I'm going to do my 10% clear ballistic test here. So I'm going to go into plain clear ballistics to see what the best potential is of those cartridges are. After that, I'm going to do more of our real world simulation where I'm going to have four layers on the front of this first three inch piece here that represents our pector muscle. I know it's kind of redundant with lead round nose bullets, but I like to stay consistent. After uh, three inches of clear ballistics, we'll have a quarter inch medium density fiberboard that's going to represent hitting ribs or sternum and to more clear ballistics and that will be more of our real world simulation and after that i am going to shoot up my steel target as well and i think that might be kind of fun with these low powered cartridges see what kind of accuracy i get in the steel so let's get started with this test all right our 32 smith and wesson long 98 grain lead round nose rated at uh, 705 feet per second let's see what i get through my lcr here see how close we get to that 705 feet per second Six hundred nine, six fifty, six forty eight, six twenty three, six sixty. All right, so a little bit high point of impact for me. The first shot I just pulled that, so I missed the uh, chronograph reading, but thirty eight short colt. Read it at 730 feet per second. Let's see what we get with these. 125 grain, so a bit heavier bullet. 640. 649. 647. 618. 599. I'm gonna save these cases for sure. Um, so similar velocity but 125 grain bolt so you have a little bit more mass there so we should have more energy interesting thing though is the recoil between these was about the same and one might say well this is a steel revolver and that lcr is you know part polymer and steel but that weighs 17 ounces on my scale this only weighs 20 ounces on my scale so being only three ounces uh heavier and having about the same recoil yeah, I'm going to say that 38 short colt kind of packs a good punch for the, the amount of recoil you're, you're feeling. So let's have a ballistics gel box, see how these compare. All right, into plain clear ballistics, this is our best potential. The best potential to get uh, good penetration or if it's a hollow point expansion because there's no denim in the way. These are lead round nose, but, you know, deformation of those bullets might happen from our rib simulation. So this is still our best potential here. So 32 Smith & Wesson Long, let's see what we get. All right, we hit that with our 38 short Colt. It's a 
we'll take a look. All right, so there's a little bit of difference there. The 38 short Colt has a good amount more damage. Both of these bullets are facing forward, forward, which would not necessarily indicate tumbling. Very straight line up until about the five inch mark. There's a lot more tearing with our 38 short Colt. So it could have tumbled and just kind of rested back where it is. Uh, I doubt our 32 tumbled at all. But what we're looking at with our 32 Smith & Wesson Long, remember parallax here of the camera will make me look like I'm putting my finger uh, further away from where the bullet is than where it actually is. But I'm lining up straight view here. We're at 11 and a half inches with our 32 Smith & Wesson Long. With our 38 Short Colt, we're at about 14 and a quarter inches. So surprisingly, that 38 short Colt met the minimum penetration we want to see of 12 inches. You know, that's the old school FBI statistics. They want 12 to 18 inches penetration, 1.5 times expansion. We're obviously not going to get that, but at least for our penetration, that met that. So let's put on our denim, put on our MDF, see how they compare that way. All right, more of our real-world simulation. The denim isn't going to do anything, obviously. However, on a lot of these soft bullets, I soft lead bullets, I do see the imprint, the imprint of the denim fabric and on that bullet nose. So that's interesting that that happens like that. So we're going to go through our denim, three inches of clear ballistics, quarter inch medium density fiberboard. Now that fiberboard will probably affect these bullets significantly because I think bullets like this are typically a lot softer than typical. So. Let's see how our 32 Smith & Wesson Long does. All right, we hit that with our 38 Short Colt. Let's go take a look. All right, so we had a similar difference between the two of these with both of these penetrating a bit less than what they did in plain clear ballistics. Interesting thing here that we're seeing here, and this is another reason why I like to use the MDF, not just for the simulation, but sometimes it will tell you what's going on with that projectile after it goes through a few inches. And three inches, relatively speaking, represents skin and just a little bit of flesh because up to two inches of this can represent skin because of how elastic it is so what we're seeing with the 32 smith and wesson long is by the time it hit this it was tumbling but our 38 short colt went through straight and that's what i want to see with something that's a lower powered cartridge we want to make sure it's stabilized enough to go through deep enough to get adequate penetration so with our 32 Smith & Wesson Long, we are a little bit shallow for being adequate. We're at about nine and three quarters. And, and honestly, that is enough if you made a front-on shot on an attacker, uh, but it's not reliably enough. Like if you made an arm shot, it's not gonna go deep enough to hit something vital in a thoracic cavity. Now our 38 Short Colt, this just went straight through. I can't tell if the bullet is facing forward or backwards, but we have a penetration of 13 inches, so it was adequate for penetration through that bone simulation. This really surprises me that something like that can hit adequate penetration. And that's something that most 22 long rifle bullets cannot do. And that makes sense, obviously, if you have a 40 grain bullet and you have a 125 grain bullet, that's three times the mass, it's gonna truck along. That That's where the word momentum comes into play. A lot of people think momentum means a 45 ACP knocks somebody down and momentum don't exist. Momentum does exist and it, it's generally expressed through penetrating deeper. It's getting that momentum going that it keep tearing through uh, flesh. And it's also expressed through um, air. Like if you have more, ment more momentum, it's gonna go through air a lot better and further and hit with more energy at distance so 
I would say here our 32 Smith & Wesson Long is a little bit subpar for self-defense, but surprisingly, I would say the 38 Short Colt's okay. So let's take a close-up look at these. And I'm going to shoot my uh, cardboard man there, my I IPSC or ISPC. I have dyslexia, so I forget which order that is. International IPSC, yeah. And then I'm going to shoot up my steel, which is the same size as that target, but in steel from a little more distance to see what kind of practical accuracy and shootability we can get. So let's get part, started with that part of that test. All right, taking a close-up look at these bullets. Here they are through our plain gel. No surprise here that there's not really any change to those. Our 38 short Colt and our 32 Smith & Wesson long. The length of those bullets are pretty similar there. But when we look through our medium density fiber board, this was where things change a little bit here. So here's our 32 Smith & Wesson Long, and here's our 38 Short Colt. And with our 32 Smith & Wesson Long, one side is definitely bent more than the other. Kind of is on this 38 Short Colt too. But the difference is, is that uh, this bent quite a bit more of that bullet. So that explains why it went through that MDF tumbling. There's just not enough mass to overcome that. With this, we have just enough mass because we're talking 27 grains heavier, just enough mass to overcome that rib simulation and to keep moving in a straight line. So this has some of the attributes of a 22 long rifle in a way where it just goes in a little bit and then it just doesn't have enough mass and momentum to bust through MDF and keep going in a straight line as where our 38 caliber absolutely did. So looking at this straight up ballistic test, our 38 Colt definitely did a lot better than our 32 Smith & Wesson Long. However, that's not bad overall what it did. It's a little better than typical 22 Long rifle performance is, but this is a lot better and a lot better with about the same felt recoil with just a hair more muzzle rise i'll take the 38 colt short, short colt over the 32 smith and wesson long so that's a close look, look at those bullets all right seven yards from the target i just want to see what kind of practical shootability i can get with these so i'm going to get a decent sight picture i'm going to pop off some rounds as fast as i think i can land those and see you know how these compare and see you know what i think they feel like compared to like a normal cartridge like a nine millimeter or a 38 special so <clears throat> 32 smith and wesson long Let's see what this does for me. Yeah, relatively easy to pull those off. 38 short Colt, same thing. Yeah, I did pull one, kind of low left. That's probably just all on me. The trigger's a lot different between these two. Uh, but I would say very, very similar in the way they feel for me. So let me finish these. All right. Muzzle rise with that is very easy to keep control on target. So let's try our 38 short Colt. All right, so very similar again. I would say in this test though, there's a slight edge with that 32. It's not just the guns either. I would say that uh, there's just slightly easier to control follow-up shots because the muzzle rises just a hair less with that 32. However, with the 38 short Colt, I really wasn't doing anything other than just jerking that trigger as fast as I could. Not really trying to get the muzzle back in on target and it relatively did come back down on target pretty easily. So let me try some Mozambique drills really quick then I'll shoot my steel. All right, if I didn't mention seven yards, uh, so I'm gonna do two to the body, one to the head. That's our Mozambique drill. And see how these compare. So 32 Smith and Wesson long. I'll start from low ready. All right, let me try that with our 38 short Colt. And again, I pulled one quite a bit lower, so interesting there. 32 long. 38 Colt. All right, so again, it's just a little bit easier for me to control that 32. So this next part is going to be pretty fun. Um, I'm not going to get real practical with this, but I think it'll be fun to shoot from some distance and see how long it takes for those bullets to hit the target because they're going to be moving kind of slow. So let me do that. All right, 40 yards from the target. This is kind of a modified dick and drill, which means I'm just shooting from 40 yards. Simple as that. 
So, 32 long. Let's see if I can have with these. All right, so that was shot a little bit high point of aim for me, so I was aiming a little bit lower. I'm guessing that the 38 short Colt's gonna do the same thing. Let me just fire a few rounds of these. All right, so for me, those are shooting kind of low. So it's the opposite, so check this out <laughs> those are 38 short colts on a loader i don't know how well these are going to work it worked okay a lot of people like to uh use 38 short colt in the in a gun that's cut for uh moon clips because those will pop in really quick so let me back it up to uh 75 yards and uh see what kind of just practical shootability I can get from that distance but I should just more or less say just for fun to see what I get from that distance because that's really what I'm doing so let me back it up all right 75 yards just for fun just for a challenge I'm not training from this distance if you want to complain about this hey it's my video so I'm gonna see if I can hit anything from that distance just for fun 32 Smith and Wesson long a little bit less than a two-inch barrel my core 605 I'm firing the 38 Colts from is a two inch barrel. So let's see what I can do here with that 32 long. See if I can make any hits at all. Camera protector plate, that was very low. So I'm going to have to aim a little bit high. Way high. I again. All right, so that first shot must have just been a fluke because it seemed like it hit really low, so I had to aim about the head of that silhouette. <clears throat> and then it shot way over the target, and then I realized that first shot was a fluke, so I aimed basically at the very base of that target, and then I was able to hit. So 38 short cold, I don't know about these. <laughs> I don't know what to expect here. I'm just gonna aim center and see where they hit. All right, so those are all consistently hitting to the left for me. I started aiming off the target to the right, and that's when I made that one hit. So at distance, it seems like the 38 short Colt, for whatever reason, is a little bit harder for me to play shots with. So that doesn't really mean anything because nobody's going to be using a snub nose revolver at 75 yards for low recoil self-defense. If you have an issue with low recoil or you can't handle higher recoil and you need lower recoil, you know, that's really the point of what I'm doing this test for. Because there's a lot of people that are smaller stature or older and they're looking for something that's maybe a little bit better than a 22 long rifle and or a 22 Magnum. And, you know, it's hard to get expansion with this. And, you know, the 22 that doesn't expand is only 22 diameter. And my point of this is you can get something that's over 30 caliber that's gonna hit and you don't need that expansion for like what a 22 would give. And if the 22 did get expansion, it's gonna under penetrate. So something, especially like this 38 short Colt, it has a larger diameter than an expanded 22 hollow point, yet it's going to adequately penetrate. And it's gonna have about the same felt recoil. So for me, that's a win-win situation, especially for someone that's already got like a 38 special or a 357 Magnum revolver and they want something for personal defense or to go to the range with a little bit to practice with. I, I would say these are both pretty good. However, our 38 short Colt, I would say completely is acceptable for self-defense. Now our 32 long, 
does a little bit easier to make follow-up shots and typically revolvers hold more capacity with 32 versus a 38 caliber so shootability and follow-up shots is in capacity is a little bit better with the 32 but in our ballistic test it was just a hair subpar for meeting adequate penetration not that it wouldn't penetrate enough with the front on shot but i would say our 38 short colt is consistently going to penetrate enough so i would say that's better in our overall test here the 38 short colt's a little bit better here but they're both okay so really surprised though with this 38 short colt because i've been meaning to test this for a long time i haven't been able to find it i tested it in water jugs four or five years ago didn't really learn much from that but having it stop where it stops in that ballistics shell really tells us a lot and i learned a lot from this this is a lot better than i thought it would be because 38 special using 158 grain at a little more velocity doesn't penetrate that much more with the lead round nose than this did so i would say it's adequate so that's what you get today cool little cartridges low recoil cartridges so as always comment share and like and thanks for watching